Saturday, September 17th. Busy day in Norman? Duh. <laughs> Not just Ohio State and Oklahoma meeting on the gridiron for only the third time in history, but also, too, give my Donald Trump. That's right. Republican nominee. He's going to be in Norman that day, too, somewhere uh, with the walking distance of the Oklahoma campus. At least that's what they're saying, if you um, believe the uh, press releases. So, yeah, big fundraiser. I'll go see him, pay $1,000. I want to meet him, I think, pay fifty grand. Uh, no thanks. I'm a little few bucks short this week. <laughs> but talking about this game itself, you know, for the Sooners, of course, major ramifications, an opportunity for a win against a, a worthy opponent and get back into the college football playoff discussion. Because let's face it, you can beat Ohio State, get the week off, and then get ready for Big 12 play. And if you can run the table in the Big 12, easier said than done. But if you can do it, then 11-1 gives you a pretty good shot with the win over Ohio State on your record, wins over Texas and Baylor and Oklahoma State, West Virginia. That will help in your bid to try to get back to the college football playoff. A loss yeah, you can pretty much stick a fork in your season because you're going to be done. And who knows what Oklahoma State of mind will be with two losses in the ring. Big 12 player it could be another loss or two on the horizon. Sooners preseason were more than a touchdown favorite to beat the Buckeyes. But, of course, things have changed. I think, one, you know, the, the Houston loss, no question, showed that the Sooners were, were you know, maybe not at midseason form when they lost that game. In fact, we know that they weren't. And another thing as well, the fact that Houston turned out to be, you know, pretty much the Houston of last year, a team that's pretty damn good. You know, they went 13-1 a year ago, and then they beat the Sooners to start the season. And that shows you that the Sooners basically are behind in several areas. And of course, the secondary was the area that got exposed quite a bit, but also it was not a well-coached game at all. I think that was one element. Number two, Ohio State, even though their competition so far has not been stellar, that's something you can't control on that schedule. But guys have taken care of business both their games. Grant, they got off to a slow start against Tulsa, but once things got cranking late in the first half and throughout the second half, Ohio State on both sides of the ball never looked back and won the game easily. You know, so much of football is complex, or at least we make it that way. For the Sooners, the key to beating a team like Ohio State, despite being young or still very talented, is to not make it complex. Okay, why do that? Okay, life is hard enough, right? It's going to come down to an acronym for me, all right? And this is how I think Oklahoma should perceive it, even though I'm not Bob Stoops, I'm not the offensive coordinator in Lincoln Riley. But you know what? It comes down to an acronym called K-I-S-S, -S, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. In other words, make it as simple as possible. Make the ground game the foundation. You have to be able to play physical against a physical team like Ohio State, a very talented young team. You have to be able to make it simple. Make the ground game your foundation, and that's exactly how you have to beat the Buckeyes. Be physical up front, and for goodness sake, keep it simple, stupid, Make it a Shamaj P. Ryan, Joe Mixon, slow, steady diet of football. Look, as valuable as Baker Mayfield is, the quarterback to this Oklahoma offense, as talented as he is, as much as we've seen him make terrific plays and sometimes make plays that are something when initially they could have or should have been, been nothing, not taking that away from him, okay? I'm not. But if he has to carry... The majority of the load in this game for the Oklahoma offensive attack, then it's going to be an attack that will not go very far. The term air raid offense is a little bit misleading because if you've not seen Oklahoma play before, but you hear the term air raid offense that Lincoln Riley runs, you might assume that air raid means that they have to throw most of the time to win. Uh-uh. Air raid attack works only if the running attack does its part. I don't know how many times I've documented it, but now more than ever, against a talented Buckeye defense, must the ground game, must P. Ryan, must Mixon, and also, too, you know, Abdul Adams, he'll be called upon, too, in this game as well. These three guys have to do the job and hopefully stay healthy as well. We know P. Ryan you know, got nicked up against Houston not long ago, and, of course, he's had history of, you know, injuries prior to this year as well. And, of course, Mixon had some ankle issues last week as well. 
Remember, there's it didn't look like Daniel Brooks is going to play injury last week against uh, Louisiana Monroe. So really, you've only got three running backs that you're going to be able to count on. And to tell you the truth, only two of them are proven running backs in P. Ryan and in Mixon. It's got to be Thunder and Lightning. It's got to be P. Ryan and Mixon to do the job. So the offensive line, obviously with Alvarez at center, Brown Jr. at one tackle, and Samaya at another, they and the rest must be able to establish control. And you know what? Deliver Ohio State, their own brand of football, right back in their face. It's got to be physical, attack, keep it simple, stupid. Otherwise, you play the game into that secondary hands of Ohio State, and we know that they might be young, but they looked experienced, you know, in their previous two games. Again, the first two games of the season. You know, guys like, you know, Marshawn Lattimore, the corner, and by the way, don't forget about the safety, too, and Malik Hooker. You know, they might be sophomores, but, you know, they played like seniors, and the big thing is, is that Mayfield, the decision-making now more than ever, must be as pivotal as and as consistent as ever, if it's not there, again, don't force it. Take what the defense gives you. Don't get too greedy because against a team like Ohio State, any questionable decision you make could be six points lit up on the Ohio State side of the scoreboard. So that's breaking down the offense. And, of course, Raekwon McMillan covers a ton of ground for the Buckeyes at linebacker, All-American the season's in. Yeah, that looks pretty much like a given. Now, conversely, Oklahoma's defense, defensive line, looks like they're ready to go. Uh, there's concerns about the injuries. And, by the way, you know, Charles Walker, defensive tackle, and then defensive end, you know, D.J. Ward, you know, both with injuries recently. Uh, Ward with the neck. Walker, uh, they had to ice uh, the area behind his knee um, last week. They've been limited to practice this week, but it looks like they'll be ready to play. You're going to need him, along with uh, Matt Diamond coming off the one-game suspension. Didn't see him against ULM uh, just this past Saturday. And, of course, you've got uh, Matt Romar. So you got experience up front. Defensive line, hadn't played too bad so far this season. They'll need to be at their prime. And they're going to go against an Ohio State offensive line that, other than Pat Elfline, who is an All-American, by the way, at center, one hell of a player. You know, sometimes, you know, you should watch Ohio State's offense play. And don't look at the ball necessarily, but look at Elfline block. He is no question uh, the anchor of that offensive line. Um, but other than him, I mean, it's not a very experienced um, Ohio State offensive line at all. So this may be an opportunity for OU strength the defensive line to come through and see what they can do. Of course, you know, the only guy that they lost up front last year for the Sooners was Charles Tapper, who was a damn good one. But plenty of experience back and an opportunity to establish control. And I'm going to tell you this, okay, this is an amazing stat that I heard on the radio earlier this week. Ohio State in their last 20 games has only lost two. But in those two losses, which were to Bot Tech two years ago and last year against Michigan State, in both games, Ohio State had a difficult time running the ball. For example, against Bob Tech, barely over 100 yards rushing. And last year, against Michigan State, under 100 yards rushing. Kind of get the theme here, everybody. And I know what people are saying. Well, you know, Ohio State runs a similar offense to that of Houston. Okay? And there's no question that Urban Meyer, head coach of the Buckeyes, and former offensive coordinator and current Houston head coach Tom Herman have been conversing back and forth. Of course, you know, uh, Meyer trying to get as much information about the OU personnel as possible, as well as schemes, as well as what to expect, okay? And you knew that was going to happen. The big difference between the two offenses, between Houston and Ohio State's offenses, although similar in terms of formation, though they, they run spread attacks, and you'll see Barrett, just like you saw Ward Jr. two weeks ago for Houston, run shotgun. Biggest difference, though, is that Ohio State will run the ball more frequently than pass, okay? That's the one thing to keep in mind. And, of course, two weeks ago, we know that the Oklahoma defense did a pretty good job. They did a very good job in rush D, but, of course, the pass defense, especially on third down, was dismal. Expect JT Barrett to run. Expect him to run in this game. I would be more worried about him as a runner than I would be as a thrower. Okay? Running attack for Ohio State. That's, that's, that right there is their animal. That there is their meat and potatoes. With the guys like Curtis Samuel, who worries me more than anybody else on that team, you got to worry about a guy like Curtis Samuel. And, of course, Dontre Wilson, they could use him as a running back or as a receiver. He's explosive as well. And in terms of OU, if they have struggles and contain the ground attack, that's where the receivers for Ohio State can kill you, like Noah Brown and Corey Simon. 
You know, Barrett loves those guys. So, you know, JT Barrett, the guy from Wichita Falls, Texas, you know, barely over two hours away from Norman. So, you know, he'll have a decent contingent there to uh, watch him, um, to support him there in Norman on Saturday night. Not quite a homecoming, but again, not far um, from Norman is Wichita Falls, Texas. So, again, uh, the Ohio State ground attack, they're pretty good. And we mentioned Samuel, but also, too, um, a quick word also for uh, Weber. Uh, Mike Weber can play, too. So, big thing about uh, this Ohio State team is they do predicate the run. They predicate it big time. So, you know, if you can contain it, obviously life for those corners for the Sooners will be easier. You know, I'm not worried about Jordan Thomas' side. I'm worried about the other side. Uh, when you have Parrish Cobb, again, he's new. He's a freshman. Thrown right into the fire early because of the struggles that we've seen Dakota Austin have. And you worry, if Cobb can't get the job done, then what else do you do? I mean, where, where else do you go? Because Micaiah Quick, I don't think is ready yet. I don't think he's ready for the prime time at corner. I could be proven wrong, but so far it's been a little shaky for him as well. I like to see what Oklahoma is going to do in this game in terms of one position. Um, that's a position that Will Johnson has occupied, that fifth uh, defensive back. Do you, do you leave him there? for coverage purposes, or do you put Capri Doucette in? And Doucette is the better tackler, okay? He's, he's the more aggressive of the two, but Will Johnson, a little more experience, and, of course, he's got the cover skills uh, to support that. So that'll be a big decision to see what Mike Stoops does. Okay, that, that, That'll be a very big decision. Of course, the Sooners will traditionally run out of a 3-4 uh, alignment, or they could go with a 3-3-5 three, three, package, and I think you'll see both in the game. My final thoughts on this game, look, I know that Ohio State is a talented team. I don't doubt that. And I also don't doubt the greatness of Urban Meyer. Wherever he's gone, he's won, and he is the best coach in college football, other than Nick Saban at Alabama. Having said that, though, this Ohio State team has a lot of inexperience. 16 of the 22 starters are first-time, full-time starters. So for those guys, this will be the first time that they – have gone to an environment like this with most of the near 90,000 fans against them. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of Ohio State support there, probably you know, probably 9,000, 10,000 fans, roughly speaking. But that means that most of that crowd, about 90% of that crowd, will be pro-Oklahoma. That's something Ohio State has to deal with. And keep in mind that this stadium will be the loudest it's ever been. Of course, with the newly renovated South End, which now makes it a bowl-shaped stadium, now the noise doesn't leak from the south side anymore. Out of those corners, it now stays in close, magnifying the noise. And I know that home field advantage is not everything in this game, but I think it is a factor in the favor of the Sooners. Also, the fact, too, experience favors Oklahoma. And remember, the Ohio State is good of a start as they've gotten off to. It's a good start so far. They haven't faced a competition that Oklahoma's faced like Houston. You know, Houston's a pretty good team. And remember that the Cougars run an offense, you know, formation speaking, just like Ohio State, even though Ohio State predicates more on the run. But still, a little familiarity doesn't hurt in a case like this. The Sooners are an underdog in this game, but usually when the Sooners are an underdog under Bob Stoops, which rarely happens, they come out on top. And I think they'll come out on top in this one. 31-24, my final score, OU to win and to have some momentum entering Big 12 play late this month. Won't be easy. Ohio State's going to be tough. They're talented. But the home field advantage, the tougher schedule so far, as well as the experience factor, way toward the Sooners. Should be one heck of a game Saturday night between two traditional Giants. I'll have my post game late Saturday night. Please check it out. Boomer Sooner.